all right so let's continue and now we need to work on the internal page which displays the meaning of the word that the user entered so let's just open the same thing in the final version in order to keep it as a reference and we need to make it look like this so let's do the same thing let's first work on the ui and then we can work on the functionality the logic now in terms of ui the very first thing that we need to do is we need to place these two icons that we have at the very top let's do that within the definition component the definition file we first need to import a few components from the material ui library the first one that we need is stack now this is a new component in the the version 5 and it is similar to the box component but it has the display flex by default and at the same time there are few other things which make it special anyway for our case we just need the default behavior which is the flex one let's also import typography only if i could spell it right and what else do we need let's also import the box and the icon button for the time being and let's also import the icons from the material icons package so we need to import the the back arrow which is named as arrow back and we can rename it as back icon and we also need to import the bookmark now for the bookmark we actually need to import two icons one with the border as such and the other one the filled one which displays that which represents as this word is bookmarked so let's import it over here first let's import bookmark border and let's rename it as bookmark icon and then let's import the just the border which is filled by itself and let's rename it as bookmarked icon perfect so let's wrap the entire thing inside of fragments and then we need to place in the stack component so the stack is going to be this thing right at the top which includes these two icons that we have so within the stack let's place the icon button and within the first one we need to place the back icon let's copy the same back so let's copy the same icon button and let's change the icon to be of bookmark icon so if we save it and if we take a look at what we have at the moment we have these two buttons and we need to fix the alignment as well as the direction so as i said the stack by itself it has the display of flex and it has the flex direction of uh, column so in order to change that on the stack component we can pass in the direction and we can set it to be of row and at the same time we want them to sit apart from each other as what we have over here sitting apart so for that we can just pass in the justify content the same css property and set it to be of space between if we do that well that's looking perfect so the next thing that we need to do is we need to have a bit of spacing around the edges as you can see it is way too close to the edge in fact it is touching the edge as you can see it's just that the icon button is wrapping it and that's why there is a bit of space but we want something like this so for that instead of adding the padding to the wrapper of the entire thing like we can do we can wrap it up inside of a box and we can add some padding of about two which will work perfectly fine we can do this thing however if we go down this road we would have to do the same thing for the other screens which in this case i believe the bookmarks as well like we would have to do the same thing so when we face a situation like this we should always opt to go with the global stylings or to say in other words we should move the layout to a to a parent component so for that within the app component where we have the router and all the different routes or to say the screens of the application we can add the layout over here and at the same time we also have to keep in mind that later we will also be working on the responsiveness as you can see we have the responsive design 
it's not that up to the mark but it does make the layout to have a fixed constraint so for that let's import the grid component from the material ui library so this component right over here there are two types of it there are containers and there are items there are grid containers and grid items and we're going to wrap the router itself within the grid container first so within the container as it speak for itself there are grid items the grid items goes go inside the container and within the container the grid container we are just going to place in a single grid item which will wrap the entire router so the thing is so if you have ever used any css framework such as bootstrap tailwind css semantic ui like there are dozens of out there if you have used any one of them you must be familiar with breakpoints so breakpoints are just caps of different device width so over here on this grid item that we have we have to pass in the xs prop which is actually a breakpoint and we need to specify the number of columns that this grid item should take so when you place the grid container the first thing that it does is it takes the entire space the entire available width the other thing that it does is it divides that space into 12 equal columns which can then be further used by the grid items which goes which go inside that container so over here when we place the container and we just place in a single grid item in such a way if we do not pass in any excess it's going to take as much space as of the content which goes inside of it so for instance if we take a look as you can see it's not taking the entire space the entire width so what we can do is on the grid item we can pass in the xs do not get confused the xs is the breakpoint the sx is the styling prop so we need to pass in the xs for the smallest breakpoint we will also be adding covering the other breakpoints as well later in the tutorial for the time being let's just set it to be of 12 so that it takes the entire available space and as you can see it has been fixed so on this grid item we can pass in the sx which is a as you already know and we just need to set the padding to be of 2 which is 16 pixels on all the sides so if we do that let's actually get to the definition screen and we kind of need to remove that thing and as you can see it's looking much better so by shifting the layout and the layout styling to the parent component such as the app which wraps the entire thing we won't have to do the same thing for any other screen because it's sitting on top of all the screens and it's wrapping them so that's one benefit of it now let's get back to the definition and let's work in order to make it look like this so the other thing is we need to display this box which displays the name sorry the word that the user searched for and at the same time the icon button which will be used for the to play the audio the pronunciation if there is like it's not always going to be the case where we get back the icon button sorry when we get back the pronunciation but if we do only then we want to display this icon button anyway more on that later let's first work on this box that we have so below the stack let's place in a box component within which we need to display the typography which will wrap the word and for the word we can get it from the url that the user is currently on as that's how we have structured the application so in order to get the param this thing the param which is within the url we can use a hook from the react router dom package so let's import from the react router dom package and the name of the hook is use params again speaks for itself so when you invoke the use params hook it returns back an object containing all the params which are within the url so let's just log this thing to the console if we do that and if we open the console we are going to see an object 
within which we just have a single param which is the word as that's how we have structured the application within the app we have this path and the value of it is the word itself so that's perfect so now as we have this object within which we have the param let's destructure it right over here and get the word and let's use the same thing for the typography that we have over here perfect so let's also change the variant of the typography to be a higher value let's go with h4 i think h4 will be way too big but let's see and the other thing that we need to do is we need to place this icon button well it seems like we can use the stack component for this thing as well instead of using the box and let's do that instead instead of the box let's use the stack and let's change the direction to be of row and we actually need to do the same thing so let's copy it from here and let's place it over here and let's also place the icon button and we need to get the play icon as well this thing this icon so the name of the icon is play arrow and we're going to name it as play icon play arrow renamed as play icon so let's get that over here and we can place it within the icon button that we have over here so if we do that well there we have the word and there we have the icon and we need to add some stylings to it let's do that so the first thing is well actually as i just said that the word seems way too big let's go with a smaller variant how about h5 and let's see and that's actually looking much better and now let's add the stylings to the stack component so using the sx right over here we need to add a bunch of stylings now i would not waste your time writing all of them like line by line so let me just paste in the entire thing and you can pause the video and enter the same thing so we need margin to the top of three background color of this linear gradient that i have over here box shadow of this value padding in the x axis left and right padding in the y top and bottom text color to be of white border radius to be of 16 2 into 8 display of well actually we don't need this thing like these three properties so if we do that and if we take a look well that's looking perfect so we just need to fix the styling for the icon button and for that actually let's do one thing let's get to the home we do have the background color so let's get it over here as well as uh, we can actually copy the entire thing but if we do it would not be the right approach as we would be copying the styling which is not the right thing so let me just actually you don't have to do this let me first try it out on the icon button if i pass in the same thing let's see how it looks uh okay i see seems like we okay so it turns out to be that apart from the background color one second apart from the background color we would sorry the background color as well as the the icon color all the other properties that we have we don't really need the box shadow as the background in itself is dark we don't need this much amount of padding and this much amount of border radius well actually we can keep the border radius to be of this the point is i was earlier thinking to shift this thing into the theme like creating a custom variant but it turns out that it would not be the right thing the best that we can do is we can shift this color that we have over here within the theme itself so let's do that so let me just actually copy this thing and get to the theme within the palette let's actually 
we can add in our own color and let's actually name it as pink and let's use this color well actually we can set the color value right away we don't need to like construct a color object so we can just set it what am i doing one second we can just set it <laughs> what is happening anyway let me just copy it once again and set it over here all right so now that we have this color let's get back over here and we don't need the box shadow over here we can reduce the padding to be of just eight pixels by setting it to be of one and for the background color this thing instead of the hard-coded color value let's pass in a function where the first argument is going to be the theme that we are working with so within the theme we have the palette and within the palette we have the color that we just added which is the pink one so if we do that we are going to have the exact same thing as what we had earlier as you can see we have the same thing because we are referring to that color and at the same time let's copy the same thing let's get to the home and over here let's replace the background to be of this thing and let's keep the box shadow the way that it is the benefit of using or to kind of shift the reused styling in the theme is that in case in the future you you feel like of changing the the theme of the application you just need to make the change at a single place like you just need to do it right over here and it's going to reflect in all the areas where this color is being referred as you can see right over here as well as if we get to the home page over here it's taking some time as you can see so that's the benefit of shifting the colors to the theme so if you do that so that's perfect anyway now let's continue and just refresh the other thing that we need to work on is the box components that we have over here and actually there's one last thing on the stack the stack that we are using we have set the justify content to be of space between in order to have some space in between it's also set the align items to be of center and at the same time i also feel like that the typography this thing h5 it should be bold just like what we did with the h4 so for that let's get to the theme and within the typography let's copy the same h4 and let's change it to be of h5 if we do that we're going to have the same effect right over here perfect the other thing that we can do is on the typography we can pass in the sx prop and let's set the text transform to be of capitalize just to make the first word in bold as you can see and there's one last thing that we should be doing within the home page the page the screen that we worked on earlier before we push the user to the to the respective path this thing well actually we can do it over here let's after we trim the word let's also lower case the entire thing just so that we have a consistent word like a consistent value otherwise we may face some problems with the bookmark thing like the user may search the same word but turns out that they may not have the same case sensitivity like for instance these two words john and like it's not equals to you do get the point it's not equals to this thing so that's why it's best to kind of turn it into the lower case anyway now let's work on the box component that we have over here and actually before we get to that point we can work on the uh, 
the API endpoint to make the request and to get the data of the word that the user searched for. But before we end this video, let's quickly work on the uh, sorry this thing let's quickly work on the back thing like to shift the user back to the previous path the previous screen and for that within the definition file within the definition <laughs> component let's import the use history hook and let's get the history instance and on this thing we have a method called go back so we just need to call this thing when the user clicks on the back icon. Let's do that on click history go back. If we do that and if we click on this button, voila, perfect. So I think that's it. And now in the next video, we just need to work on the functionality side, a bit of logic to make the request to the endpoint and to get the data and then to display the meanings. So let's do that in the next video.